Welcome to Kati Pachi. Today we're talking about everyday sewing essentials. So have you ever wondered what the bare minimum that you can get away with for sewing or whatever your project may be and still have a quality project in the end? So that is what we're talking about right now. So the first thing on my list of must-haves is good quality thread. Whether brand doesn't really matter as much as the quality of your actual product. So as a general rule, I would steer clear of the Walmart specials or like your Coates and Clark. Those are kind of brittle threads. They're not going to be as long lasting and they're going to lint a whole lot more is actually my main concern, which means more wear on my machine and more cleaning that I have to do. And who wants to do that? Um, so a good quality thread is going to be less prone to break on you or shred and it's going to have more accurate seam allowances um, and then the right thread for your project is always important as well. So if you're embroidering, you want embroidery thread. If you're serging, you want serger thread. If you're quilting, you want either piecing or quilting thread. Um, so make sure that whatever you're sewing with is the proper tool for whatever project you're working on. Um, I personally use um, Madeira and Guterman and Mettler and um, Superior Thread. So those things do come at a slightly higher price point, but I personally have found that it is worth it and I don't have nearly as many issues with my machine and I get very accurate seam allowances as a result. So the next thing on my list of must-haves is some cutting utensils. So these are personally the three things that I will not be able to sew or just in general you will not be able to sew without. So a rotary cutter, you have to have it to cut your projects out whether it's quilting or sewing or embroidery, yeah, the like. If you're cutting anything, nine times out of ten the most accurate way to cut it is going to be with a rotary cutter. Every now and again, especially with sewing, I'll find myself turning to a pair of scissors or if I'm cutting things apart real quick, cutting um, my dog ears off of quilting, cutting curves and such like that that are real fine tuned. Sometimes if I just have my 45 millimeter blade out, that's not gonna serve me very well, so I'll turn to scissors. Um, so scissors are a must have, as are snips. So snips are not going to replace my scissors. I use these for trimming threads primarily so if you use your scissors to trim your threads, then in those areas where you trim just those two or three threads, it's wearing out your scissors in that place. And eventually you'll find that your scissors don't want to cut very well and they're not cutting evenly all the way down. And so if you make it a habit to trim your threads with snips, then one, you have a super great excuse to get the cutest new little unicorn scissors or I've got a myriad of snips back here because I love snips. So snips are a personal obsession with me. I cannot get enough of them. And they're only like three and four dollars, well aside from these. Um, so for three dollars I can save the life of my scissors and I get a super cute excuse to get little teddy bear snips. and the classic crane snips and unicorn snips because they're fun and who doesn't want these? I mean, really. <laughs> so that, save your scissors, get some snips, have a little fun. Something's supposed to make you happy. These make me very happy, so yeah. And like they wear out, you lose them, and it's $3, so you're not like breaking the bank with that um, obsession. And then seam rippers, which if you haven't seen our video, we have a uh, tutorial or just a video all about the different types of seam rippers. So depending on whatever project you're working on, yeah, have a good seam ripper on hand that corresponds to that project, whether it's a blade, a scalpel, sometimes just cutting off your seam works, but ideally you would have a seam ripper. The next thing is needles. So you can't sew without a needle in your machine. It just doesn't work. Um, so I use organ needles. These are just basic 7511s. That's your universal everyday sewing 
most threads will run through these needles. Um, if I'm doing quilting, I'll swap to an 8012 or a 9014 for top stitching. If you have jeans, you probably want like a 116 or a 9014. If you're doing embroidery, you might want an embroidery needle. If you're doing anything that's going to have like the potential to run, you want to get a ballpoint needle. So needles are important. They're going to save your sanity. So you want the right needle to correspond to whatever project it is that you're working on. Straight pins. These are super handy. I have a kajillion of them. These are my favorite. We'll definitely be doing a video about straight pins in the future, so stay tuned. But a good pin, potentially one that you can iron over, um, one that's nice and glides in so it's not too thick, one that's not too long or not too short, and that makes a difference. So just everyday average straight pins um, are really good to have, and then you can add to your arsenal later with those like applique pins and extra long pins. And then a marking utensil or a bunch of marking utensils. This is my marking utensil of choice just for everyday stuff. I tend to turn to this. This is a water erase. Um, we're going to be doing a video again in the future about just marking utensils because there's so many different ones out there. Um, but you want something to be able to mark with whether it is an actual pencil or a chalk pencil, a marker that's air erase or water erase or heat erase, something that you can put a line and see that line on your material. So sometimes that means you're going to have more than one marking utensil, whether you're working with dark fabric or light fabric, but you need something that you'll be able to see on your project that will come out down the road. So having a marking utensil of some sort is absolutely essential. Um, and these are my go-to sizes, so having rulers are super important. Um, and these have either a grip on the back or a rubberized grip, so you want a ruler that you can clearly see the lines on and that is going to stay in place when you put it down, whether that's by adding grips to it or having a ruler that comes with grips. So those things are important. And typically I want some form of degrees marked on mine. So I have a 45 degree and a 60 degree marked on this ruler and then it also has a 90 degree here. So that's really useful. I would not be able to do anything without my rotary cutter and my rulers. So then you have a cutting mat and you can watch our video on that. We talk about all the different things that you look for in purchasing a cutting mat, but cutting mats are absolutely essential. You can't do anything without them, um, or at least I wouldn't recommend it. Um, so definitely have a cutting mat on hand, and then an iron and pressing station. So clearly this iron is not hot, but you want something that you can press your material with. So if you don't press, you will never have as professional or as clean of a project when you're done. So no matter what it is that you're working with, absolutely, you want to press it. You want to press those seams. You want to press anywhere anything is joined together. And you want your overall product to be pressed at the end. So no matter what, iron and the ironing surface are absolutely essentials to my sewing. So stay tuned, we're going to be doing a video here shortly of the things that I personally would not sew without. So my everyday essentials that are over and above this, this would just be my basics that I'm going to have on hand. And then there are the other things that definitely make my sewing so much more pleasant and nice. They may not be essential, but I find them personally to be essential. Oh, guys, a working sewing machine. <laughs> Whoops, <laughs> that was on my list. <laughs> um, the last thing that you definitely need in order to sew is a sewing machine in good working order. So 100% I sew with a sewing machine. It definitely makes things very efficient. You can sew without them. I would get much cleaner, much more refined projects or product in the end 
in like an eighth of the time that it would take if I were to try and hand sew something. So find a machine that works for you, that's within your budget, but that you can go to and trust that it will work every time you sit down to sew. So a sewing machine is absolutely a must have when it comes to sewing, um, at least for me. So stay tuned. We're going to be doing more of these videos in the future, breaking down some of these individual items, going further into detail about what to buy, what differences there are between them, and where those would be used. If you're interested in that, hit subscribe, like this video. We're going to... If you want to see more of this content, hit like, subscribe, drop us a comment of any ideas that you have for future videos that you would like to see, and thank you for joining us. We really had fun with you today.